We are so excited that on this new Deer's Day, January 1st, 2014, that we have the privilege. This is an opportunity for us. The door of grace is open for us this morning. That we can avail ourselves of this grace. Amen? Amen. And I'm so excited about 2014. Praise God. Faith to live life in abundance. And our theme for this year is faith to live life in abundance. And we know that we have grace for the double. Amen. Amen? Amen. And so, but this today is our first message installment on this series. Our series is Faith to Live Life in Abundance. And our message for today is we have to follow the example of our father in the faith, Abraham, part one. So let's take a look as we start off our series here. Let's take a look at 1 John 5, 4. Let's open our Bibles to 1 John 5, 4. First John 5, 4. If you're there, say amen. Amen. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Now, if you go back up in this passage, the Apostle Paul, through the Holy Spirit, is telling you that God is what? God is love. This whole book is about that. That God is love. Amen. For example, if you look back over in the fourth chapter of this book, and you look at the 16th verse, 1 John 4, 16. Just turn the page to your left. There's one page. It's 1 John uh, 4, 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us for what? God is what? Love. God is love. So he's talking about that through this whole text. So here's what we can say here then. Love and God are interchangeable. Because God is love. So... It says that for whatever is born of love overcomes the world. So in other words, in order for us to walk out this faith to live life in abundance, we've got to receive God's love on a continuing basis. And that has got to be our motivation. That has got to be the driver, the love of God. Because whatever is born of love overcomes the world. That's how we're going to overcome in this world. And that's how we're going to receive this promise. We've got to be motivated by the love of God. Amen? Amen. And it goes on, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. So it's by our faith. And our faith in what? In God. In the Word of God. Amen. In the Word. In God. It's a, in the Word and God are synonymous. God is Word. In other words, when you look, you, Jesus was the Word made flesh. Amen. And when you're looking at Jesus, you look at the Word. You're looking at God, you look at the Word. You're looking at love. Amen. You're looking at God. They all want the same thing. So we know that the motivation, that, in other words, how we're going to walk out this faith to live life in abundance is we've got to be driven and motivated by the love of God. That's number one. We And, and what we do in other words, the actions that we do have to be born out of what? Out of love. Born out of love. We've got to give birth to things out of love. The motivation has got to be that. And if we need love, what can we do? We can receive it anytime, anywhere. Do we just receive the love of God? We release the love of God in our heart and soul. In the name of Jesus. Amen? We can just amen. Re amen. We can receive it anytime. We've got it. That is the foundational element of how we're going to receive this abundant life. It's got to be love. Now, when we think of this love, because it's foundational, let's turn over here to 1 Corinthians. Hold your place there, because we're going to be coming back there. But let's turn over to Corinthians, the 1 Corinthians, and the 13th chapter. First Corinthians, the thirteenth chapter, and the starting at the fourth verse. And I, and I, First Corinthians, the thirteenth chapter, 
and the fourth verse. And we're going to go through a portion of the eighth verse. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and the fourth through the eighth verse. For there say amen. 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 Now, I'm going to read this out of the New Living Translation. Love is patient. So, when it's born of God, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatever is born of love overcomes the world. So, that means we've got to be patient. We've got to exercise patience in this, right? Amen? Amen. And kind. We've got to be kind to people. I had somebody tell me, Amos, you're too kind. <laughs> Well, that's, I, thank you. Because that's, it, it's, it, it was a negative comment, but it's that's an affirmation that the fruit of, one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is kindness. Yeah. So praise God. You think I'm being too kind. Well, there, praise God. Thank you for that. You know, thing, then, think. It's abundance, overflowing. Heck yeah. Amen. Praise God. Love is not jealous. Fourth verse here. Or boastful or pride. Proud. So, or prideful. So, in other words, love does not... So, when we see our brothers and sisters, maybe something happened good for them, are we jealous of them? No. No. Man, praise God! That is good! We're singing their praises. Now, are we boastful ourselves? No. We carry that which we carry in a humble way. Amen? Amen. Uh, how about prideful? Are we prideful? Love is not prideful. So, you know, it's not arrogant. You know, love is not rude. So we have to ask ourselves: Do we do can't do things in a rude way? Are we rude to people? Can't, can't be that way, right? Because we're talking about whatever is born of love overcomes the world. This is what love is. Amen. Amen. It does not demand its own way. It's my way or the highway. That's all it's going to be. Is that how it works in the, in the kingdom of God? No, 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 no. That is not how it works. Is not irritable. I like that. The amplifying tra translation says touchy. You ever remember somebody's always touchy? Oh. I'm like, great. You're like walking on eggshells around them. It's like, oh my goodness. I mean, I'm, I'm like, ooh, I don't know. What, wow, what will happen if I, if I you know. As a matter of fact, this one person, I, I, I think he's kind of joking in jest. He said, when, it, when he, all he has to do, he says, if he, want, if he has an argument, all he's got to do is say hello to his, to his wife and some kind of argument erupts. He got a, I got a problem there, man. <laughs> this is all I do is say hello <laughs> and it's a problem you know praise God that's that a problem he needs to get that resolved um, <laughs> it is not irritable it keeps no record of being wrong fifth verse so in other words love doesn't well you know what I remember when you did back me January 1st 2006 how do you women always remember those things <laughs> well love does not keep any records of wrong though. that's not operating in love so whatever is born of love overcomes the world and and in even our faith, amen? Amen. So it does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and in, I'm the seventh verse here now, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. That's love. Love never fails. Amen. It doesn't fail. So we know that as God's children... As we look at this text in 1 John, in 1 John 5, 4, that we're just looking at, which is the foundation text for our series, as we look at that text, 1 John 5, 4, we know then it says, let's go back to it, for whatever is born of love overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So love, our motivation of love, has to be the foundation for our faith to work. Love is the foundation for it to work. That's how we're going to get life in abundance here. While we're in 1 John, let's take a look at 1 John 4.4. 4. Just turn your page here, just to the, to the left there. and uh, Or to the right, however you want to look at it. To the left. Um, 1 John 4.4. 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. So, if we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, we have something that is greater than what is in this world. Amen. That means we're victorious over it when we exercise our faith and we're motivated by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So, He that is in us is greater than He's in the world. So, we've got all the power.
empower the Jews, the source on the inside of us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm-hmm. Let's take another look at. Let's take a look at John, the Gospel of John, the sixteenth chapter and the thirty-third verse. John sixteen thirty-three. John, the sixteenth chapter and the thirty-third verse. John sixteen thirty-three. John 16.33. If you there, say amen. amen. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Well, it, we have peace. In other words, that peace means there's a wholeness. There's a completeness to us. And what God shares with us always drives toward peace. Amen. And complete. That, again, faith to live life in abundance. This is how we're going to do this, right? Because he says, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Well, we can have peace. As we're exercising and walking by the love of God, as we're releasing our faith for what God provides for us, faith to live life in abundance, we realize that Jesus Christ has already overcome the world. And he's given us the word. If we'll release, if we'll walk in love and exercise our faith on the word, we're going to be successful, we're going to be prosperous, and we're going to experience the abundant life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So now, our, final, our series is Faith to Live Life in Abundance, and this is going to be a year-long series. And we've got grace for the double to undergird that and support that. I didn't know if Michael was going to start jumping up and shouting or not, but it hurt me hurt that again. I didn't know. Now, our message, our first installment on this series is out of uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the 6th verse. And our message title, our first message installment on the series is, we have to follow the example of our faith, father in the faith, Abraham. And we're going to have two parts to this. We're going to see here the second part, when do you think? On Sunday. Amen? So, our text here out of Hebrews 11, 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Now we know faith is the substance of things hoped for and everything things have not seen. Amen. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. And when we think about our message for today, we, uh, we have to follow the example of our father in the faith, Abraham. Abraham is our father in the faith. Amen? Amen. And would you say that Abraham walked out Faith in his life? Yes, he did. I think so. <laughs> I think that's why he called the father of in the faith, right? Amen? Oh, yeah. So he pleased God. But without faith, it's an apostle to please him. For he, I'm going back to the sixth verse here, but he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Amen? So we know then that as God's children, just like we follow the pattern of the father in the faith, Abraham, he, he is, as a matter of fact, if you read this 11th chapter, Abraham is right in there, right? It's called the chapter of the hall of faith there with all of these wonderful, beautiful examples of our patriarchs that walked out their faith in God and advanced their cause and were successful and were victorious in their calling. Amen? Amen. So, I want you to write this down. I want you to write this down. If we will develop our faith, if we will develop our faith on the Word, there will be a payoff. If we will develop our faith on the Word, there will be a payoff. If we will develop our faith on the Word, there will be a payoff. I want you to write this down too. Another thing I want you to write down here. We have to imitate Abraham's faith. We have to imitate Abraham's faith. We have to imitate his obedience. And we have to imitate his uprightness. We have to imitate his faith, Abraham's faith. We have to imitate his obedience. And we have to imitate his uprightness. 
Now we know that as God's children, does anybody come before our Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit? Nope. No. So we know those three come first, right? But then we also have a father in the faith, Abraham. So we know all honor and glory goes to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But Abraham is an example for us when we're thinking about Im uh, somebody whose faith we have to imitate and we, and, and, and we got to be obedient like him. Because it was really hard on Abraham. Abraham, it was challenging on this guy. He had a really challenging time. But we know that by faith, all things are possible. And one of the things, when God came to Abraham and he gave him the word of what to do. Now, it took him a little bit of time. Right? It took him a little bit of time. But Abraham took the word and he acted on the word. So we know that as God's children, that when we receive, we have to accept the word that God gives us. And we have to, and we have to receive it, we have to believe it, and we have to act on it. Just like Abraham did. We've got to imitate his faith. We've got to imitate his obedience and his uprightness. So in other words, that's how this word, this grace for the double, and faith of life and obedience, we've got to accept this word that God gives us and we've got to walk this word out. Just like Abraham did. Amen. We gotta we, we gotta imitate his faith on this, we gotta imitate his obedience on this, and his uprightness about it, how we how he handled the word that came to him. Amen? Amen. Another thing, when we think about Abraham and his and his faith life, Abraham sacrificed. He made sacrifices. Big ones. Big ones. Because he was called out of his family. Right? Well, even though he was called out of his family, he had a couple of relatives that went with him anyway. You know, Abraham loved family, you know. But he had to make sacrifices. At 75 years of age, this man has to give up the comfort of this wealth that he has and all this prosperity, and they got to get on some camels. He took a couple of families with him anyway, a couple, besides his wife, too. He, he kind of, you know, you know, expanded things a little bit there. But he took a couple family relatives with him as well as his wife. And, uh, and, these, and these people, his servants and everything. And they're getting on camels. And you know how long that trip was? When, when he was called off from the Chaldeans and the Ur to uh, Canaan. You know how long that trip was? 400 miles. That's like going from here to almost well, New York City. Or probably maybe a little New York City. A couple of miles. And he's traveling on a camel. And this included part of the Arabian Desert. This was a long trip, arduous trip. Did he have GPS to guide it? No, he had God to guide him. Wow. Did he have the technology to guide him? That's faith. That is faith. No GPS. So we know then it took, you know, it took Abraham from when he first probably got this message from God to go, probably took him about five years. That long? It took a while, yeah. Probably about five years, but it, it it and and you know because this was a huge deal. Yeah. So we ask ourselves when God gives us a call, how long does it take us? Yeah. It shouldn't take you know we you know don't get me wrong we can't judge anybody, but this man was giving up a lot. To go someplace he don't even know. You know he couldn't turn on you know uh, Google Maps. <laughs> You know, and get an idea of what was happening in the layout of the grant. But you know, he didn't have the technology. Let me get my cell phone. Yeah, right. Amen. So he's following God, the voice of God. Yeah, amen. And to fulfill what he did. So we also too, as we think about faith to live life in abundance, as we think about following the example of uh, following the faith, we've got to also too be willing to make sacrifices. Didn't Jesus do that? Is he fulfilled wow. his promise? He was given, following his plan. He had to make sacrifices. And even didn't God tell Abraham to sacrifice his only son to him? Yes, he did. The son of promise. And Abraham was willing to do that. Another example of faith, of this, this great father in the faith. So we know that as God's children, that we have to be prepared to make sacrifices. And also, too, as God's children, we've got to make every day count. Write that down. Make every day count.
We've got to make every day count. And so as God's children, it's important that we do that. That we utilize what God has given us. Let's, as we're, you write that down, let's turn over to uh, Hebrews. Let's look at Hebrews, the 12th chapter and the first verse. Hebrews 12 and 1. Hebrews 12th chapter and the first verse. Hebrews 12 and 1. Do they say amen? amen. Therefore we amen. also, when, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Wow, look at that word. So, cloud of witness. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. There, are, there are those heaven... Oh, I mean, there are the witnesses that are in heaven that can see even our acts and what we do. So we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. But we've got to walk this out just like Father Abraham did. And you got to lay... And what is the sin? The sin is because circumstances can come against us. Okay, Father Abraham gets the word. Uh, what is his family saying? You're going to do what? Do you know Abraham? He's 75. Uh, do we need to take him, you know, has he got some mental health issues going on here? I mean, you don't know what was going on or what was being said about him. From his business associates, because Abraham was a good, a good businessman, right? Man, what's wrong with him? This dude's totally flipped out. But you don't know what the circumstance comes. And, and it, laziness can be a circumstance. The devil can be a circumstance. Uh, maybe our own nature, maybe where we were raised could be a circumstance that could hinder us from walking out this promise that God has given us, the promises of God. Amen? We have to adjust ourselves. And, and it goes on, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So we've got to lay aside the sin because if we get entrapped up in sin, what's going to happen? That's going to get us off the course for, for late life and abundance. Right? And then we've got to keep ourselves set on it. You know, when people get involved and ensnared in sin, it gets them off the goal. How many times have people who have fell into sin said, "You know what? If I'd only done the right thing, I'd get so much. I'd be so much better off." Now, I should have done this years ago. So we, as God's children, we got to stay off the sin, away from the sin. Do we have control over this? Yes, we do. We have control whether we're going to sin or not. So we have control over this. And we have to act, and we can pray and ask God if there's something, we have a weakness, and we pray God to help us with this. But we also gotta keep our eyes on the goal. We've got to keep our eyes set. We've got to keep our mind set that we God has given us faith to live life for abundance, and He's given us grace for the double. And we gotta walk that out. We gotta have that set. Amen. We gotta work on that. We gotta make plans for that. Amen? Amen. We gotta be thinking about it. When we leave today, if you haven't already, start thinking about your plans for 2014. How are we going how am I going to get this double? Mm -hmm. In my health. Mm -hmm. And my weight loss. I already had 1.2 miles this morning already. <laughs> but I'm trying to work on losing weight. We gotta whatever we set our mind, whatever we have set for this double, and we ask ourselves, how are we gonna do this? Let me say, I gotta start eating vegetables more, I gotta start eating fruits. I gotta cut, you know. Cut so we gotta we gotta watch out, watch out your desserts and so forth and so on, right? So we have to set ourselves up for this. This has to be this has to be set up. We gotta set set ourselves up for this. So we ask ourselves, we we set ourselves to it. How are we gonna walk that out? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay. So. Our mind has to be has to be settled. We got and we got to be prepared for circumstances arise that we can continue to walk out this road. Let's turn over to Genesis here. Go 
go back to the book. We're going to go back to the beginning here. Genesis. We're going to look at the 12th chapter. And we're going to look at the 2nd through the 5th verse. The 12th chapter of Genesis. And the 2nd through the 5th verse. Genesis 12, 2 through 5. Now this is a promise that was given to Father Abraham, right? Amen? Amen. It's a promise given to him. Now this promise, because it was given to Abraham, it's also given to who? Us. Us, through Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? So let's look at here. Let's look at this, this promise that was given to Abraham. He says, I will bless you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. So in other words, the Lord is going to make those that are in Christ Jesus, where the blessing of Abraham has come upon them, they're going to become a great nation. Okay. So each one of us, Michael kind of jokes about, about, about greatness, but each one of us has the capacity to become great. Amen? Amen? I'll make you okay, I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. So this is how we're going to walk this out. We're going to imitate, we're going to, Abraham was given this promise. Well, this Abraham, this promise is ours as well. We have to walk this out. Faith to live life in abundance. This is how we're going to get it. The promise, this same promise was given to Abraham is given to us. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Third verse. I will bless those who bless you. So we have, it, you know, we have, as God's children, we realize that as we operate, as we bless our brothers and sisters in Christ, as we operate in this blessing and dispense this blessing, this blessing is going to do what? Come back on us. Amen? Amen? And he says, I will curse those who curse you. That's a part of the promise, part of the blessing. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Who comes under that promise today? Us. And are we taking the blessing and are we ministering it out? In other words, are we sharing with others the good news? Like I told you, this brother that I visited with, it, you know, it, 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 it had some challenge, a lot of challenge in his life. The stuff he shared with me that was just, you know, it, it, you know, it was it was bad stuff. But we shared and opened his understanding to some ears. Well, this is our responsibility. We got to take this blessing and get it out. Amen. Amen. Fourth verse. So Abram departed as the Lord had, had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brothers and his sons, and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people whom they had acquired in Haran and they departed to go to the land of Canaan so they came to the land of Canaan well that's a, that's a lot of going that's 400 miles I mean that's, that they covered a lot of bit in a part of a verse because this man traveled 400 miles through the Arabian desert to fulfill this so Abraham walked away from everything wow. that he had to start over again. Now he took, you know, any wealth he had with him, of course, gold and stuff like that. But he had to start over again. That's faith. At 75, that's faith. That's a lot of faith. That's a lot of faith. At that age. At that age. So, you know, did Abraham let the circumstances of his age get in the way? No. God gave him the word. Moses was called at how, what age? To go back to, the, to Egypt. to free. What age was he called into ministry? 80. 80. So did Moses, well, I'm 80. I have a circumstance here. I can't do what you've told me to do. No. Is that how it was? No. I don't know. So when we think about uh, imitating the faith of Abraham and obeying him, this man put everything on the line. At 75. At 75, you know how I many people think about retiring. They are and Abraham retired. just getting started. He just getting started. Oh, 75. Ooh, I'm just getting started. Praise God. It's good. And at 75, did you hear moaning and groaning, making that, that 400 mile trip? Oh, well, I'm always me. Remember we saw the video presentation that one wise man was always groaning. He groaned 105 days and so forth. Was that Abraham? No. He's godly. We're not complaining. We're not groaning. He's faithful at the promise that God gave him. And he's obedient to the promise that God had given him. Amen? Amen. So we as God's children, we realize that we want to imitate the faith and the obedience and the uprightness that Abraham exhibited uh, in his walk, 
in his, in, his, in his walk to walk out what God had given him. And you know, one of the things we have to remember also too is that God doesn't always, he doesn't always uh, give everything all the way, lay everything out for us. It's normally one step at a time. That's how God gives. He normally is one step at a time. Okay. I want you to write this down. We all, we all have a call to witness. We all have a call to witness. God has given each one of us okay, the responsibility to be a witness for Him. So I want you to think about this. How are we going to witness for Christ? How are we going to be a witness for God? God has given us a call to support His work. Each one of us has that call. A call to witness, a call to support. I want you to write this down now. And a call to help. We have a call to support and we have a call to help. So as God's children, how are we going to accomplish that? You know, we, we look at, uh, let's look at, well, you're in Genesis, the 12th chapter. Let's look at the 7th verse here. The 7th verse. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, oh, uh, Genesis 12, 7, I'm sorry. Genesis 12, 7. We're already in Genesis, so it shouldn't be that. Uh, we're just up at the, a couple verses above it. But Genesis 12, 7. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. You know, Abraham had a sense that when God gave him something, or he had an encounter with God, it was holy and special. We think about this grace for the double. How do we revere that? It's holy and special to us. It's something we built up. It's like he built an altar. We build up in our hearts the promises of God and what he's given us. And we build up this faith for abundance, to live life in abundance. Amen? Amen. Let's, uh, so let's, uh, we also, we got, and we also have to be obedient like Abraham. Now we want to imitate his faith. Let's look at, uh, let's go to Hebrews now. Go back to Hebrews. And let's look at the 11th chapter of Hebrews. Let's look at the 11th chapter of Hebrews. Love of chapter of Hebrews, and we're going to look at the 8th verse. The love of chapter of Hebrews in the 8th verse. And it says, By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place where he would receive as an inheritance. By faith, Abraham... In other words, this is our inheritance right here. In other words, faith to live in abundance or this access to have great... A, a, we have access to grace for the double. This is our inheritance. This is what God has given us. When Abraham, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place where he would receive an inheritance. In other words, we receive this, we believe it, we walk it out, and as God gives us direction, we're faithful to go. Just like I told you about that. Just that. So, whatever the direction is, wherever you're, you're given, you have to take time to minister there. You have to take time to do what God tells you to do. When God gives you the direction, we have to we, we got to build this up. It's like Abraham built an altar to it. We have to build this up in our hearts. Amen? And then we've got to follow a direction that's going to help us to be able to uh, man get it manifested in our life. God's going to get it done. But we got to listen to his direction. As he tells us to go, as he tells us to do this, that's what we do. Let's look here back at the 8th verse. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Had no clue. So as God's children, because if you know, is it faith? No. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we realize then by faith, this abundant life and this grace for the double has to be walked out. We've got to walk it out by faith. We don't know. If... if <laughs> God, he, you know, you just obey the voice of God and bam, it's going to open a door for you. He'll give you the next instruction. God only works one instruction at a time. He don't give you the whole thing laid out. Amen. He doesn't. He does not give us the whole thing left out. He's like giving us a staircase one step at a time. And one of the things, 
That's exactly right. And one of the things, Abraham worked with a single mind focus. He had a single minded focus on the, on the word that God had given him. He kept at it. He kept at the focus. And that's exactly how we're going to get accomplished as well. We're imitating Abraham's faith here, the father in our faith. We're imitating his obedience and we're imitating his uprightness. And the Holy Ghost is working, gave us that to help us and the Holy Ghost is going to give us the instructions and instructions so we can walk this thing out. Amen? Amen. But we've got to also have, write that down, we've got to have a single-minded focus to get this promise walked out in our life. A single-minded focus. We're going, we've got access to grace for the devil. We're going to have, a, a, we're going to have an abundant life. Live life in abundance this year. So we've got to have a single-minded focus around that. How are we going to get this abundant life? How are we going to get this grace for the double manifested in our this, this double manifested in our life? Let's look at uh, uh, Hebrews 11, 9, and 10. We're right here by it. Let's read on down here a couple more verses. Hebrews 11, 9, and 10. We're right here. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, <coughs> dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So what does that mean? The kingdom of heaven is being built up here on earth. When we saw, amen, as we saw Mary and Joseph, when they were going from uh, uh, Nazareth to Bethlehem, they were doing what? You kept, they're building up the kingdom of God. They're building it up. Well, Abraham was doing the same thing. He was following the voice of God. He's advancing the kingdom of God. That's what God told him to do. So what does that mean? We know that every day we live in this life moves us closer to where? Eternity. Our ultimate goal is heaven. Jesus is going to come back for us. And we're going to be taken and changed in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. Amen? So we know that what Abraham did is, it says here in the 10th verse, and he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder maker is God. Abraham has got his eyes on heaven. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And he's trying to build up the kingdom of God here. Well, that's our... We got we to gotta do that too. That's us. As we're working to build up the kingdom of God, God is going to open for us faith to live life in abundance. We're going we're gonna to experience more abundant life. Was Abraham a man of poverty? No. no. And think about it. Even though he's going through this comfort, what? Abraham is way safer in that desert than if he had stayed back in Haran. Yes. He's way safer. Yes. Because yes. he's in the what? He's in the will of God. That's right. He's walking in his now, if he stays in the ring, I ain't going, I ain't doing that. that. That's too dangerous out there. No. Now he's out of the will of God. Now, he, now he's in a dangerous place. And what does this tell you about Sarah? Sarah's out there on a donkey traveling, what, 400 miles with him? She's, She's right up behind her husband. Obedient to her husband. On that khaki, and you know they got they got probably had desert, you know, the sand blowing, and they got this going on, that and the other, and it takes a little good while. You got all these people with you, moving with you. It took it took some time. I don't know how fast a camel travels. I don't know if you know. It's not very fast. So this is a, this is a long trip. This took a long time. Maybe twelve miles a day. It, it, it took a long time. Long time, but. Sarah's right up behind him. Right? She's right there with him. So as God's children, we realize that, and this is only part one. On Sunday, we're going to experience part two. But we know that we've got to imitate the Father in the faith. Imitate His faith. Imitate His 
obedience and imitate his uprightness. Now we know Jesus, Heavenly Father and Jesus and Holy Spirit come first. We know that. But God has, Jesus came to bring the blessing of Abraham on us. That's how it's characterized. Didn't we read that in Galatians? Amen? So we know that as God's children, we, we have got to keep our eyes on heaven. We're, every day we live, we're moving closer to eternity. Amen. Every day. And the kingdom of God has got to be built upon the earth. Jesus already prayed it. We prayed that in the Lord's Prayer today. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God has a plan. We know we're, 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 we want this city too that God has built. <clears throat> Amen? And so as we strive toward that, as we strive to build the kingdom of, of God here on earth, we know that this abundance... Remember that uh, verse in Matthew 6? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you? Yes. Amen. It's going to come. The abundance is going to come. As we're walking out, what God has told us to do. We, and we've got to keep our eyes on the future and don't look back. That's right. The past is the past. We have to bury the past. We got to let go of the past. We can't let the past constrain us because something happened in the past or some other way. To th forget all that. What does God say? <coughs> Let's do it that way. It's, it's like, what does the Holy Ghost say? Let's do it that way. <coughs> Amen? Amen. As a matter of fact, the only thing that comes from looking back is trouble. Because if we're looking back, we're not looking where? Forward. Forward. If you're driving the car down the road and you're looking back and you're driving, accident. An accident is waiting to happen. <laughs> you got to keep your eyes where you're going. Quit looking back. Forgive, forget, love, forgive, That's it. leave alone, and move forward. You know, I, I thought about when Lot, those angels came to Lot and was told him to get out of that area, Sodom and Gomorrah. And he told his wife, not to look back. And she looked back and turned to a pillar of salt. So looking back, there is no benefit in looking back. No. Now, if we made some mistakes, we can learn from that. But we don't dwell on the past. No. We don't dwell on the negativity. Amen? Amen? The negative things. The Bible I read in Philippians 4 chapter says, dwell on those things that are those good things, those noble things, those positive things that have happened. That's what the, that's what the apostle, the Holy Spirit says. Because what we tend to meditate on, what we tend to talk about and dominate our conversation, what we tend to dwell on tends to what? Manifest. <clears throat> tends to manifest. So we know that as God showed him, is Abraham complaining like that in, in that video person that we saw, the, the wise man was complaining? Abraham complained about this trip. Praise God, we get in the canon, we get into the promise that God gave us. But this is good. Oh, this is blessed. He's talking it up. And is he lazy? No. Is he concerned about harsh circumstances? No. Is he concerned about getting lost out there in the desert? No. Because no. God's with me. He told me to do this thing. So I'm, we depended on him. Sarah come to him. Well, you know where we're at? Well, not really, baby. But uh, God's guiding. I missed it. Well, Lord, where should we go now? Keep straight. Okay, we're going to keep straight. That's what the guidance I got. We're going to keep straight over here, over that, over that, that, dunk, that, that dune hill. We'll go, go over that way. <laughs> you know. And he's, he's walking by faith. And so we as God's children, as we walk by faith in what God has given us, we are, we have, we're going we're gonna to draw in, we're going to experience this grace for the double. This double is going to manifest in our life. Amen. This abundant life is going to manifest in our life. Amen? Amen. But we want to imitate the faith of Abraham, imitate his obedience, and imitate his uprightness. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's, let's, let's rise and close in prayer.